of Israel has taken out another key Hamas terrorist. He led one of the major attacks last year on October 7th, and he was an employee of the United Nations Relief and Works Agency. Well, the news comes as Israel is pushing ahead in its war against Hezbollah in the north. Chris Mitchell brings us the story from Jerusalem. Israel's top general believes the IDF can win its war against Hezbollah in Lebanon and bring Israelis home after being driven out by Hezbollah rocket attacks. In the north, there is a possibility of achieving a decisive outcome. We have thoroughly dismantled Hezbollah's senior command structure. Israel is keeping up its strikes in Beirut, where their jets blew up Hezbollah weapons manufacturing and storage sites. And ground troops found another extensive tunnel system loaded with weapons, which elite Hezbollah forces were expected to use to launch an October 7th-style invasion of nearby Israeli locations. The IDF wiped out the tunnels and the structures above, which were also jammed with Hezbollah weapons. Israeli forces are displaying some of the 3,200 explosives and 2,500 anti-tank missiles and other deadly weapons they've captured from Hezbollah. The IDF's top military spokesman says all this shows why Israel had to defend itself by invading Lebanon and waging this war on Hezbollah to protect itself from another massive terrorist attack like October 7th. The amount of weapons we found confirms the importance of the ground activity of our forces to remove the threat to the northern settlements. But the IDF suffered one of its worst days of losses in Lebanon, with five soldiers killed Thursday and quite a number wounded, seen here being evacuated to Israeli hospitals. In Gaza, the IDF says it's eliminated a Hamas commander who on October 7th led the attack on a bomb shelter that killed 16 Israelis, with four others captured, including Israeli-American Hirsch Goldberg Pauline, who was later executed. The IDF said this Hamas terrorist, Mohammed Abu Itawi, was an employee of the United Nations Relief and Works Agency, which UNRWA itself has now confirmed. Mohammed Abu Itawi commanded the attack on the bomb shelter in Reim, where young people fleeing the Nova Music Festival were taking cover. Iranians are showing their deep links with Hezbollah, protesting the deaths of Hezbollah's top leaders from Israeli airstrikes and chanting death to Israel. The head of Iran's Islamic Revolutionary Guard says the U.S. anti-missile defense system that America has recently placed in Israel won't be enough to protect the Jewish state. Major General Hussein Salami said if Israel starts attacking Iran, you cannot win this conflict. We will destroy you. Israel reportedly delayed a strike on Iran after a U.S. intelligence leak of Israel's attack plans, according to the Times newspaper in Britain. Actual targets weren't leaked, but those are likely to include missile launching sites since they pose Iran's main threat to Israel. Chris Mitchell, CBN News, Jerusalem. Well, recently on The View, Vice President Harris was famously asked, would she change anything over the past years of the Biden administration? And she famously re replied, I can't think of a thing. Well, here's something to think about. In the first week of the Biden administration, they reinstituted, reinstated the funding from the United States to UNRWA, the UN Relief Works Agency that is now quite clearly employing Hamas terrorists, including one of the main architects of the October 7th massacre in Israel. Well, how about that one? Would you change that one? Would you take Hamas funding away so that U.S. taxpayers don't have terrorists on the payroll? Uh, I think that should be number one. Can we please stop funding terror and do it and by eliminating all the funding for UNRWA by really questioning what are we doing with the Palestinian Authority? What are we doing with the Lebanese army? Is any of that money going into Hezbollah? These are very critical questions, and in that critical question, are we standing beside our ally in the Middle East, Israel?
Here's another one for you to consider. Again, in the first week of the Biden administration, they said the Houthis were no longer on the designated terror list. The reason they did it is they wanted humanitarian aid to go into Yemen, and they can't do that if a terror group is in control. So they redesignated it. Well, how about in the aftermath of all the missile attacks and other attacks on U.S. warships? Those are acts of war. Could we please finally remove that and call them for what they are? They're a terror group. They're a proxy terror group for Iran. That's the country controlling all of this. Can we please stop encouraging our enemies, and especially can we stop funding them?